We're trying to solve one of humanity's biggest problems, which is how will we sustainably generate energy in this new world where energy usage will only go up from here. How do you approach the monumental challenge of innovating renewable energy? During a 13-year project that concluded in 2020, the Makani team set out to take on the challenge using technology inspired by kite surfing. I am Priyanka, a developer advocate with Google Cloud, and I wanted to learn more about how Google Cloud played a part in the search for a new kind of wind-powered energy. How were the kites tested and simulated to further the project's progress? The team gave me the inside scoop on how Google Cloud powered the simulations and data processing for the energy kites. I am very excited to find out how the kite simulation logs were collected, processed, analyzed, and visualized to make continuous improvements to these kites. But before we jump into the technical background, let's see a quick overview of how wind-powered kites actually work. Makani's energy kite was an aerodynamic wing tethered to a ground station. To begin flight, the kite used rotors to hover vertically in the air. Once at full tether length, the kite transitioned into crosswind flight, flying in vertical loops. As the kite flies, the rotors are spun by the wind, generating electricity that is sent down the tether to the grid. The kite's path is managed by the flight computer, which guides the kite even in turbulent winds and safely returns it to the ground station. So those are the basics, but to understand how the Makani energy kite worked, it is helpful to look at how the mechanics of a traditional wind turbine translated into a crosswind kite. The blade on a wind turbine redirects wind and creates one force that pushes on the tower and another that pushes the blade forward. The forward push of the blades turns a generator to make power. The crosswind kite is like freeing a blade from the tower. The freed blade, now a wing, is able to grab more wind, therefore making more power than it could when stuck to a tower. The crosswind kite grabs more wind and generates more power for the same size wing from the wind turbine, but with less materials. trying to extract power from the wind. And that's what we would get closer to when we went testing. It's like the actual wind, the physical world where our technology had to work well. So sometimes the challenges were, it was not windy enough and we were sitting there waiting for wind and sometimes it was too windy. Because flying a real kite is expensive, Makani's team created software that would simulate the kite flying with all the wing components and as much of the physics they could simulate close to a real kite. They needed to run the kite at many different wind directions, at different altitudes, so they would generate hundreds of different configurations to simulate the flight. Then these configurations were fed into compute engine instances that will run the kite simulations. The compute engine instances would be created dynamically to run these simulations, generating log files and reports, which would be then saved in Google Cloud Storage. And these compute engine instances would eventually shut down themselves, saving cost and staying efficient. After that, the software engineers in the team would pull these logs and analyze them. They would look for issues, red flags, things such as kite did not fly very well. There are some issues here. They would make new modifications and then restart the simulation process again to go through the logs again. And this process keeps repeating until the team felt confident that the real kite will not crash under those circumstances. Once satisfied with the simulations, they would go to a real testing site such as Hawaii or Norway to fly an actual kite. And as the kite is flying, it would send the logs to the command center on ground. Once the flight is done, the logs are then sent to Google Cloud Storage for engineers to analyze again. They repeat the same process, look at the data, analyze it, make modifications to those configurations, and then go back to the first stage run a bunch of simulations, verify that those changes will make the kite fly better and won't crash and will repeat the entire cycle. Now, 
Let's talk about data analysis. The engineers had two ways to analyze the data. Manual lookup, which is downloading the file to their computer, load it into MATLAB or use a Python program and run their own analysis scripts. But with a project like this, there needs to be a well-defined, consistent analysis that could run over and over on all the flight data. For that, they built a data analytics front end on App Engine, where an engineer would submit a request for all the logs in a particular time range and analyze them with these predefined criteria. App Engine will store the request into Cloud SQL and send it to PubSub messaging service. Jenkins Master will pull the analysis request and distribute the job to a bunch of Compute Engine Worker instances. These instances were always alive, waiting for requests to be sent to them. The worker would send a request to cloud storage for the log files for that specific date and time range, process those logs for analysis, produce the results, and then store them back in Cloud SQL and publish to App Engine. Essentially, the Makani team ran a bunch of simulations, collected a ton of data, and learned from it. Then they flew a real kite, studied that data, and reiterated the process for the next successful flight. Google Cloud played a critical role in this process by providing them a scalable infrastructure for simulations and data analysis while keeping them focused on the real problem of harnessing wind energy. Though the Makani team's journey has drawn to an end, they set up a portfolio of open source resources, including technical reports, videos, documentation, patents, code, and more. Check out the Makani website to get a full overview. If you are interested in learning more about Makani's journey, they also shot a full-length documentary, which we have linked below. Makani's goal was to harness wind energy and Google Cloud played a huge role in providing the resources needed to do just that without worrying about the infrastructure, scale, and data processing. In this behind-the-scenes series, we will continue to explore how Google Cloud powers incredible projects such as Makani, and I'm looking forward to taking this journey with you all.